has given me strength to come back to his house one more time. And uh, it's amazing what a nap would do for a coon in the afternoon. Praise the Lord. So uh, we had a wonderful time today. I've got a simple sister Rita. And I had a wonderful meal. And the God is good all the time. Praise Amen. the Lord. Hallelujah. Can the church say praise the Lord tonight? Praise the Lord. Can you say it again? That's the way that I like to hear it. That's the way God likes to hear it because he inhabits the praises of his people. Amen? Amen. Yes. Praise the Lord. Let us open with prayer. Well, once again, we come to you in the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. Lord, we thank you for all that you've done for us all throughout this day. Lord, we thank you for the services. This morning, Lord, is his
Thank you. Take it to the Lord in prayer. Yes. That's what we're getting ready to do, is take our request to the Lord in prayer. I want to say this to Brother Tim tonight. Every time I see Brother Tim, I think about the time that God had spoke to my heart and told me to tell you to say, praise the Lord three times for seven days. Seven is a completion. Don't think you did that in vain, brother, because God is still moving in your life. Oh, yes. I want you to understand that tonight. You don't have to be afraid when God gives the word. He will take you, away. you don't have to fear what God says. Hallelujah. What you have to fear is not being ready to meet the Lord when he comes. And I know the people in your tonight are saved and born again. Praise God. Praise God. I'm in his presence tonight and I was thinking of we was singing that song, Take It to the Lord in Prayer. You know, for some reason, Brother David, I just feel a hum behind this pulpit, Brother. Hallelujah. Yes. Uh, don't, don't get worried. I'm not going to stay here for that song. Amen. Go ahead, Brother. Go Take it to the Lord in prayer. Yes. Hallelujah. Because we serve a God that is still able to answer prayer. Amen. We serve a God that is still able to put an angel in our midst tonight. Amen. And make no mistake, the devil showed up tonight. Because when God's people gather, he will assemble himself in some kind of a thought in your mind or something about home or something what maybe we'll be able to do this week. Some way he will try to interfere with his service. But I know that all powers that be are ordained of God. Yes. Amen. Let us pray. We have any requests tonight? Spoken request. It's a dream Whenever we'll lost loved ones, uh, we say before it's too late, our children, God will bless them. Let's also keep Joel's uh, mom in prayer. The Lord will continue to bless her in a mighty way. Also, let's keep Chase's mom in prayer. She's doing a lot better this afternoon. They took off all the uh, incubation and all that uh, the medicine and stuff like that. Uh, so she's uh, coming around. So God's blessing. God's answering prayer. So keep praying. Keep on, keep on praying. And praise believe the Lord. Uh, also, uh, Sister Rita goes for Paul and Tuesday, let's keep her in prayer. Lord will touch her. And also, Melinda Wednesday, she's got a surgery Wednesday. Let's keep Melinda in prayer. Uh, also, uh, let's keep the Pinion family in prayer. Lord will touch them, help them, be with them. And also, uh, uh, Micaiah's uh, mom. And of course, prayers for Let's keep her in prayer. Lord will touch, minister, and uh, that family down. Yes, amen. Remember my son in Las Vegas, Nevada. <coughs> he started his uh, chemo and radiation last week. And the, the second one, she said, made him very, very sick. So let's keep him in our prayers tonight. And by yes. the way, church, he watches our every service. Praise the Lord. And then he was that woman that's got the short hair that seems so pretty. I said, that's who sings. <laughs> who, who was that other woman that sang? I said, that's my friend Rita, too. But what, what, what about that man that sings the anchor hold? I said, that's Tim. He's my buddy, too. Hey, yes. so, who is that preacher that just moves around so much that I get seasick? I said, that's my pastor. Hey, yes. So you can tell he's watching. Praise God. I thank God that my sons are watching television or is online tonight. Praise God because God will get the word out. The word of God will not return void, church. The word of God will not return void. You may think it will, and it does. The sister angel will pray for your family and pray for you. I'm here to tell you that God is going to answer your heart's cry. Hallelujah. Yeah. Because that's the kind of God that we serve. Amen. Someone else have a request.
Let's remember my wife Joyce tonight. She's been having some issues, and, and the issues have been having her. So let's pray that God will touch her tonight and strengthen her. She works a lot of hours a lot of week, you know, and, and she's 81, but she she can now do me any day of the week. Uh, I asked Sister Rita while I said, how would you like my little song in my teaching this morning? My hidden talent, I thought to myself, she, she would say, yeah, I'd like you to keep the hidden, too. <laughs> well, all right. Anyone else have a request?
towers. I can remember that every yard that you would pass it said, God bless America. But America needs to bless God. Today. America needs to give God praise because of him to the Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you, Lord. I'm building this thing tonight. Oh, yes. Praise the Lord. Oh, you used to feel it tonight. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Amen. We're going to have a special song, brother. Tim and Sister Praise the Lord. I gotta take up an offering. Yeah. yeah, I gotta take up an offering. A rookie cop stood up in the academy, and the instructor asked him. He said, "What strategy would you use to take uh, uh, to uh, disperse the crowd?" The rookie cop looked at him and said, "I'd take up an offering." <laughs> uh, we don't want nobody splitting the scene tonight. We're gonna take up an offering. Amen. I need a couple of volunteers. I have any. I have one. Go ahead, Haley. Haley. Okay. Got another one? Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Father, we thank you, Lord, for the opportunity God to give to you tonight. Father, we pray that you bless everyone that will give and has to give God tonight. Yes, Lord. Father, you know the need of the church. And God, we know that it takes the finances of the people, Lord, to keep the church going. The air conditioning running and the heat going. Although, Lord, it seems like we never have no heat. But God, we ask you, Lord, just to warm this place up tonight with the power of the Holy Ghost. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Bless him, Lord. Throw that in there. It's just rain on him.
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Is your king tonight?
can use you and mold you and make you into what you need to do for the glory of God. Hallelujah. Lord, prepare to be a sanctuary. God is so good. Hallelujah. God is so good. Have your Bibles. Second Timothy tonight. Second Timothy chapter 3. Second Timothy chapter 3. If anyone needs a busy bag, see Sheila. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank God. Second Timothy chapter 3. Jumping off point. As I said earlier, it's a hot one tonight. Hot off the press from the Lord. <clears throat> you don't like it? Talk to Him. Hallelujah. Second Timothy 3, beginning in verse 1. This know also that in the last days perilous times shall come. For men shall be lovers of their own selves, coveters. Boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient, the parents unthankful, unholy, without natural affection, truth breakers, false accusers, incontinent, fierce, despisers of those that are good, traitors, heady, high minded, lovers of pleasure, more than lovers of God, having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof, from such turn away. For of this sort are they which creep into houses and lead captive silly women, laden with sins, led away with divers' lust, ever learning and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. Now as John's and Jambres, which stood Moses, so do these also resist the truth. Men of corrupt minds reprobate concerning the faith, but they shall proceed no further, for their folly shall be manifested to all men, as theirs also was. But thou hast fully known my doctrine, manner of life, purpose, faith, long-suffering, charity, patience, persecution, afflictions, which came unto me at Antioch, at Iconium, at Lystra, what persecutions I endured. But out of them all the Lord delivered me. Out of them all, the Lord deliver me. Heavenly Father, come before you tonight. I love you, God. And I thank you for your many blessings. Thank you for touching. Thank you for moving in a mighty way. Thank you for everyone here and everyone watching live stream. Everyone in view this week, God, I ask you, Lord, to mention the message one more time. God, pour out of heaven, Lord, reach down and know our ears, know our hearts. Lord, help us to receive what you have for us. Lord, shake us up, stir us up. Help us to be what you want us to be. Lord, reach down and, Lord, step on our toes that we'll get right and we'll be right for your coming because you're soon coming king. And we've got to be ready if we want to go to heaven. Lord, we love you tonight and we praise you. Thank you for everything. In your holy name we pray. Everyone say it. Amen. 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 Having a form. Having a form. This is a letter uh, that Paul wrote to Timothy. Now, it's a letter from prison. Paul was in prison and he was writing this letter. Now, you wouldn't think someone would want to write a letter from prison to encourage someone else, to be a blessing to someone else. You would think someone writing a letter to ask for their help to get them out of prison, to ask for their help to do something to get them out, whether it be break them out, whether it be uh, uh, talk to other lawyers to get them out, whatever the case. You would think that someone in prison sitting behind cell bars uh, that has to listen to the guards and, you know, has three hots and a cot, you would think they would be sending out letters asking for help, but not at all. Paul said, you know what, I'm going to send out a letter to help someone else. I'm going to send out, oh hallelujah, I'm going to send out a letter to help uh, young Timothy. I'm going to send out this letter to help you, Timothy, and I want you to be encouraged. I don't want you to be dismayed or discouraged, but I want you to be encouraged. I want to talk to you about a few things and what he's telling him in this letter, and what he's telling him in this epistle, and what he's telling him uh, that's going on. He says, you know, you heard about uh, the, the, the situation I'm in. You heard about uh, the, the, the situation I'm in. I'm in prison, and you know, all the persecutions that I faced at Iconium and Lystra and all these uh, persecutions I faced and, and I faced all these problems and I'm in prison right now and he said but out of them all God delivered me. Out of all those times of persecution, out of all those times of trouble and woe that God delivered me out and he told Timothy, he was telling him to hang on there. He was telling him to hold on to, uh, to God, to hold on to what was taking place. He began to tell him some things to be on the lookout for. He said, uh, I know this uh, in the last days perilous times Because we're living in perilous times. We're living in a time in, our, in this day and age uh, where people are doing the exact 
things that Paul wrote about over 2,000 years ago that has come to pass in the days that we're living in, the times that we're in right now, uh, we're living in those times, the uh, head and the high mind and the, uh, the lovers of pleasure more than self, uh, and the lovers of self and, and the lovers of pleasure more than the lovers of God, and all these things. That he, he began to tell us that there's going to be people that's going to love self more than they love God. And you know, uh, uh, back in the day when I first got saved, you know, I thought uh, when God got a hold of me and, and I changed and I got saved and accepted him and really got rooted in God, I thought, man, how in the world could people walk away? How could people uh, leave uh, leave God and leave uh, leave church and, and not keep serving God? And how could how could people just discredit or discard God? And, and you know, I was so excited and I never would have believed that people would love pleasure and self and doing things they want to do more than God because I, I was shown and I was taught you know, the right way to serve God. I was told that God you know, would bless and would prick our hearts and would show us how to live and teach us how to live and we would work out our own salvation with fear and trembling and I understood that. You know, but you see, I was taught, uh, you know, as far as reverence for God and what to do for God and that God came first. But we live in a time that Paul is talking about. He says that in the last day, it's time to come. The time when people is going to put God on the back burner. The time when people are going to put God outside the church and say, well, if you want him, you can have him out there, but we're not going to have him in the house of God. We live in a time where people are pushing God out and saying, we want pleasure, we want self, we want things that we like and things that we want to hear instead of God. Come on. And that's what he was telling Timothy. He said, he said, all these things stay away. Don't do these things. Don't have any part of this. He says, having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof, from such turn away. That means get away from them. That means get away from the thoughts and the ideas. Get away from the mindset that these people have. The traitors, the heady, high-minded, those of pleasure, Lord, those of God. Uh, all these things that they're doing. Let's go back to the to poor, without natural affection. Truth breakers, false accusers, incontinent fears, despisers of those that are good. You just look around. There's a lot of despisers of those that are good. Yes. Preacher, how you say that? Well, there's people coming up against God's Word every day. People coming up against the one that's preaching or teaching or telling about God's Word every day. You know, the, the political settings will allow you to mention God, but they don't want you to mention Jesus. They want you to mention God because they say everyone has a God. Let me tell you, there is only one God. His name's God Jehovah. It's not, we don't have many gods. We have one God. Like I preached the other week, the Egyptians, they had many gods, little gods, but they couldn't do nothing. But let me tell you, I know a man who can. He's a God that we serve tonight. He's a God, hallelujah, that created it all and gave us life. And we're here tonight because God allowed us to. People are alive today driving up and down the road because God allowed them to live. One more day, one more moment, people better wake up and say, you know what? We better listen to what Paul said in the Bible. We better listen to what the Word of God said and quit having a form of godliness, but be God. Hallelujah. You see, not everyone that says, Lord, Lord, is going to enter into the kingdom of God. There's those that are false. Phony baloney is what I call them. Uh, not the real McCoy. You know, there's a, everyone's seen a, a real $20 bill, correct? Yeah. Everyone's seen that. There's also people that make these things called counterfeit $20 bills and try to pass them, and they get in trouble for uh, passing these counterfeit bills. They, 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 they look pretty good. They look pretty close. They don't, you know, you don't put your hand on it and they even rub off on your hand. They look pretty close. But there's a way to tell the real McCoy from the phony baloney. Well, the same way is in the church world and around the Christian realm. Hallelujah. You can tell the real saint of God and you can tell the phony baloney. Hallelujah. You know how? To preach how do we tell? By the discerning of the Spirit. Because God gives us the discernment that we can tell when somebody, hallelujah, is just blowing smoke. When somebody's got the real deal, when somebody's full of the Holy Ghost and the anointing and the power of God in their life, you know it. And when people don't have the anointing or the power of God, you know that as well. Let me tell you tonight, hallelujah, God's looking for some people that won't have a form. They won't have a form that they pretend to be the church or pretend to be godly and they live like the devil and act like the devil. I got three places I'm going to go to tonight. Hallelujah. And people might like it or people might not like it. But let me tell you, these are three areas that God began to breathe into my life. And this one was breathing.
he did tell me this morning during Sunday school, the, the last one I'm going to speak about, that, that's where it all started, where it all belonged. Hallelujah. Or where it all come to pass. <clears throat> We look at Paul as he's in prison and he's, he's telling Timothy, you know, these people that, that are like this, these ones that have a form, stay away from them. But you see what the crowd wants to do in today's time? is gather around the ones with the form. Oh, now I got the best form of this. I got the best form of that. I've got the best. Oh, I, hallelujah. I got the best shout. I got the best this. I got the best that. And they want to have a form. But they deny the power of God. Amen. And like you see, we want to have a program. And we want to have this. We want to have that. But we want to do all that without God having free reign in the midst of God's people. We want to, that's what the church world across America has begun. You see, Paul was talking to Timothy about the church. He wasn't talking about just the center crowd. He wasn't talking about just the worldly. Because, you see, the worldly are going to live heady, high-minded, truth breakers, all those things. The world's going to live like that. But he's talking about the people that are supposed to be real for them. A form that's supposed to be read that acts like the church, that pretends to be the church, that goes to the house that and calls it a place of worship, but they're not having the real deal in their life. They're not, they're not being a, the real form, first of all. Hallelujah. They've allowed church to become a social club. Uh -oh. We live in a time where people want the church to be a social club. And it's, good, it's all about meeting this one or meeting that one. It's about seeing who's there or who's not there. It's, a, it's about being social, uh, just following man. Let me tell you, when we start following man, we're going to fall and we're going to fail. We need to follow God. We need to follow what God wants in our life. We can't have just a social club. It's all right to have fellowships. It's all right to get together and socialize. I'm not talking nothing about that, but I'm saying when we've allowed the church to become a social club instead of God's house, hallelujah, when we've been in a den of thieves, instead of a house of prayer, there's a problem in a church world. There's a problem in people's lives when they've allowed social, got a social club to come in and say, uh, well, uh, well, let's do this and let's do that and let's, uh, let's make everything just, uh, just beauty, uh, beautify for man instead of beautify for God. We've got a problem. You see, hallelujah, we, I'm just going to go on, go on with it. You can get me in or old me. It's all right. Hallelujah. We walk around across America, our three-piece suits, our new dresses. Well, hopefully the women wear new, new dresses. <laughs> and the men wearing the three-piece suits. I better clarify. Huh. Help me, Lord. Huh. And, and, and putting on a show. Well, preacher, look at me today. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You know what? Let me just be point blank. I don't care what anybody wears as long as they're wearing something. And, but I want to see them acknowledging who God is. I want God to do the work in their life. Because I come to find out and I come to tell you tonight, hallelujah, that when God gets a hold of the heart, he'll make sure everything else is what it needs to be. When God gets a hold of the real heart of the individual, he'll, he'll allow everything else to be what it needs to be in modest apparel and modest and all this and all that we learn about and we understand. God will do all that work. Hallelujah. I don't need to dictate. Hallelujah. And you see, and let me tell you, it's all about what Jesus, or how Jesus is in people's lives. Either he's in somebody's life or he's not. We've made it a social club in the church world of America and we said, you know, we'll, we'll just come in and we'll just go along and get along and we won't ruffle any feathers. Well, you know what? Some, sometimes hens need their feathers ruffled. Hallelujah! Because God's got a work to do and if we don't reach people, there's going to be a problem yes. one day because people's going to say, well, so-and-so said I could do this and they're going to be looking around and brother so-and-so or sister so-and-so is going to come around and say, well, I thought that was right. We better know that we know that we're right. right. Not having a form of God, as you see. We, 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 need to, we need to choose God. We need to chase after God. Not follow, uh, not follow uh, 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 church people. Not follow uh, the preacher or follow this, but follow God. You see, we have, a, we have a, a, a time in today's society where people want to just gather. Just to, just to gather. Just to say they went somewhere. Church is not a place just to say... I just went somewhere. Church should be a part of our everyday living. <coughs> God. To my God. I'm not necessarily talking about just being in the house of God. I'm talking about church service. <coughs> God. Being, being what God wants to be. It, 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 it shouldn't be where, well, I, I went to church today. And, and, I, and I went to church yesterday. And I went to church last night. And, 
You know, we need to get excited. Hallelujah. Instead of having a form of just going to church, we need to have the knowledge and understanding that we can be the church. Amen. Hallelujah. We don't have to be a form and, and, and say, well, I went to church because just going to church won't get you to heaven. Just going to church won't make you a Christian. Just going to church won't make you do right or live right. But I'll tell you what will. Hallelujah. When you get full of the, the power of God in your life and you let the conviction of God come forth. Hallelujah. These churches across America will get back to being houses of prayer. Get back to being what God's calling them to be. Get back to being a place that's not social clubs, but a place where people, hallelujah, begin to reach out to God and God heals and God saves and God blesses and God sanctifies and God fills with the Holy Ghost. Get back to the places that God has called us to be across America. Amen. Hallelujah. Not just a place to gather together. To just be gathered. But gather together to edify one another and lift up God. See, a lot of places have forgotten to lifting up God. Mm, help me, Lord. We, we live in a society where this form has caused people to just, who can I see today? Well, I wonder who's going to Now, let me just, let me, let me just meddle here a minute. As far as a pastor or preacher and teachers, you know, a lot of times we, we look at numbers. Sometimes. A lot of times we look at numbers. And, you know, you look at numbers on everything. I mean, you look at numbers. We try to lose weight. We do. Look at the scale. See what you started at and what you got to lose. When you, uh, when you do all, uh, uh, when you look at your paycheck, you look at numbers, right? You want to make sure you got paid the right amount. And so in church, uh, you know, a lot of times, even people, lay people, we'll, uh, we'll, we'll look at numbers. Well, how many was at church uh, this morning? Was it 150 or was it 50? Was it 20? Was it, uh, we, we look at numbers and, you, and, and, you know, and we, we, we get to worry and get to thinking about all the ones that, and, you know, that, that, that chooses not to be there, chooses not to be in church and, and, we, and we worry about it. And, and so sometimes as preachers and teachers and, and, and speakers and, and singers, we so many times we concentrate on the ones that, that, that are not there more so than we do concentrate on the ones that are there that God's wanting to reach down in here. That God showed up for them. Because you see, whether we like it or not, God knew yesterday who was going to be here today. Whether we like it or not, God knew last week who was going to be here, who's going to be here Wednesday. Hallelujah. You might not even know if you're going to be here Wednesday or not, but God already knows whether you're going to be here. He knows who's not going to be here and who is going to be here. So you see, we've got to get back to the place that, you know, we don't look at, uh, we don't always look. Now, now, as a pastor, I've got to, you know, I'm supposed to call people and, or, and, and I go visit or talk to people that's not here and say, you know, you okay? And, and, and I understand that. That's, that's not what I'm talking about. What I'm talking about is when, when we show up for God's house, when we show up to do godly uh, godly things and we, we are expecting God to move in our life, we need to show up and let God show out in our life so we can be equipped to go outside these walls and we'll worry about the rest. God will, God will handle everything else. God's in control of it all. We don't have to, and we shouldn't be worried about all the things that and they're right at the moment don't matter. We shouldn't worry about all the good things about uh, who's here and who's not here. What we should worry about is that I'm here to serve God. I'm here to praise His holy name. I'm here to lift Him up on high. And hallelujah, if He'll see so kind and so good to come down, hallelujah, and let that anointing shine on my life tonight and equip me for tomorrow, I'd be most thoroughly blessed. That's the mindset we need to get back to. Yeah. Amen. But hallelujah, we've got a lot of people across the church world. Mm. Well, brother so and so ain't going to church tonight, so I think I'm gonna stay home. Oh, help me, Jesus! Uh, what? <laughs> Hello? Uh, yeah, sister so and so ain't going to church tonight. Okay, well I'm gonna stay at home myself. You see, that's the kind of mindset that a lot of church people across the world have. Amen. Let me tell you. Let me help somebody tonight. You can't make somebody go to heaven. And you can't get nobody else into heaven. Mm -hmm. Only you and Jesus can get you into heaven. Amen. Hallelujah. So you know what? Hallelujah. If brother so and so or sister so and so or this one over here or that one over there don't want to or don't or can't or is not able to go to church tonight, that don't mean that you can't go and worship God. Now there might be a time, I'm not talking about sitting and afflicting. I'm talking about when everything's going right. Hallelujah. And just because Billy Bob's not here don't mean I shouldn't show up. Hallelujah. You, mm, help me, Jesus. Go ahead. Amen. Let me just help you. 
<laughs> if I if I stayed out every time I thought so and so or so and so should be here, uh, Brother George preach every service. <laughs> I'm telling you the truth. Because you see, we it's easy to say, well, brother so and so ought to be here. Sister so and so ought to be here. Well, you know what? We can't help that they're not. But what we can do is say, Lord, I'm here. Amen. Use me. Right. Lord, I'm here. Amen. What can I do for you, Lord? What? How can I help you, Lord? How can I be used for you? I, I can't help that one, though, not over there. I can't help that one's not over here. I can't help that, Lord. But, Lord, I showed up for you. Amen. I showed up for you. Not to be seen or to see others, God, but I showed up for you. That's the mindset the church world needs to get back in. But what's happened across the world is becoming social. <clears throat> A social gathering. Get it along and get along. Hallelujah. We've allowed sin and things of the world to infiltrate and indoctrinate and come in and take hold in our churches that used to be on fire for God. Oh, I'll get ahead of myself. That used to be holy living for God. They turned and they went a different route. Well, let me tell you, going a different route ain't necessarily going to get you to heaven. Because God changes not, people change. But if we change from the message, if we change from what God has said, then there's going to be a problem. There's going to be turmoil one day. Let me move on. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Secondly, secondly, people's gotten used to a watered-down word. Mm -hmm. Hebrews 4 and 12. For the word of God is quicker and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword. Piercing even to the dividing son of soul and spirit, and all the joints of morrow, and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. People have watered down the gospel of Jesus Christ so much that instead of the word being sharper than any two edged sword, they, they got the word looking like a butter knife. Uh -oh. Thinking it's going to cut, some, cut, cut somebody and help people to feel like they've been wrong. Let me tell you, when a preacher. Mm -hmm. When a preacher says it's all right for you to sin a little every day and you'll be okay, there's a problem with that. Come on, come on. Let me tell you tonight, hallelujah, the world has watered down, hallelujah, the message of God. God, God sent a word, God sent a message some 2,000 years ago. We've got the word of God. Paul did not have this whole word of God, this whole Bible. He didn't have it to go by, but what he had was understanding with God. What he had was a relationship with God. What he had was a transformation with the power of God and the Holy Ghost. People want to have it like it is. They want to be told sin is okay. They want to be told that don't worry about it. God understands. Uh -huh. They want to be told God loves everybody, which he does. And so they're told God will send you away or send you to a devil's hell. That's what they say. Well, you know what? The person sends their self. God doesn't send them. But the Lord does say, Depart from me, you work over Nick, I never knew you. As I said earlier, not everybody says, Lord, Lord's going to enter in. They're going to say, Lord, I prophesied in your name. I did all these things in your name. But what they did was they had a form and they had a show. They, had, they, they, they acted like, Hallelujah. Because you say, people might say, Preacher, that's talking about the sinner crowd. No, because they said, and cast out devils in your name. Let me tell you, the devil can't cast out the devil because he's not going to cast himself out. That's common sense. Cast out devils in your name. So, so people that used to be what God wanted them to be, somehow they had a change in their mindset, had a change in their living, had a change in their lifestyle, had a change and said, well, you know what? And they allowed the, the phony doctrines and the phony teachings and the phony this and phony that to come into their head and say, well, it's all right to do this. It's all right to cuss. It's all right. You don't have to worry about it. Oh, oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. It's all right to do this. It's all right to talk ugly. And God understands when you get mad, you just got to talk ugly. Well, no, you don't. Hallelujah. God doesn't put up the words in your mouth. Amen. Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. All right. Blame it on Dorothy. Yeah. Hallelujah. <laughs> Water down the word so much that they say, well, God understands if you want to take a little snort every once in a while. Mm -hmm. Oh, 
go drink. He was watering down the word so much. They said it's all right to drink. It's all right to party. It's all right to do this and that. God understands. When you when you wound up and you need to just relax. Just do what you need to to calm down. That's all right. That ain't what God said. Hallelujah. He said, he said to steer clear of the alcohol beer. Steer, steer clear. Preacher, what did he say? Don't drink wine where there's an excess, but be you filled with the Holy Ghost. Well, preacher, what's excess? Hallelujah. Excess is any of it that's going to cause you to be determined to drink more or to do more or to do something against God. Any mind offering drug is going to cause things to come into your mind that's not what it's supposed to be and not how it's supposed to be, right? Hallelujah. And so we live in a time to where the Word of God's been watered down. The Word of God's been, uh, been said, well, it's all right. You know, you know that's why. Hallelujah. That's why we got... Let me just help you. I'm just going to go ahead on all That's why across the church world, we got, we got, not Brother Ray. Brother Ray's not here. Brother Ray's here. But we got choir directors running off with the piano players. We got, we got preachers running off with the, with the Sunday school teachers. We got people all over the nation doing this and doing that because of a watered down message that somebody says it's all right. Just love who you want to. Help me. Come on, man. All right. That's what's going on in our nation. What's going on in our, in our church world across the world? No, I'm not talking about the noble church of God. I'm talking about all the church world across the nation. It's watered down. People's watered down the message. And I'm not going to stand up here and debate you over which version of the Holy Bible to use. I use the King James Version. That's what I grew up That's what I use. That's what I like. Okay, whatever you use between you and God. But there's a lot of versions. I will say that there's a lot of versions way on down the line. Not the New King James and uh, NIV, but way on down the line. There's some versions of the Word of God that has taken pretty much the whole meaning out of a lot of the Scriptures. Yeah. The whole meaning out. And has said, it's all right to do this. It's all right. Because people have placed in. When I, I've told you before, tell you, when I was, was youth pastors uh, at uh, East Alabama, and, and uh, Brother Steve Simpson worked with our youth and had a drama team. They had, uh, they had this one skit, or one, one little drama that was called the Erasable Bible. And what it was, was uh, uh, the, uh, the Bible, you would, you would have one, uh, somebody would be holding a Bible, and, and, they, and somebody would be saying something, and they wouldn't like what that said, so they'd take an eraser and pretend to erase that part out of the Bible. Then they'd go over here, and they'd erase part of this out of the Bible. And you know, before long, you've got everything erased, but the big acts, and the, and the these and thous, but everything else is erased, because... They didn't like the way it made them feel. You see, the Word of God is not supposed to make us feel ooey good, but the Word of God is supposed to come into our life and change us that we can be what God wants us to be. That's why the Word of God is sharper than a two-edged sword. That's why it can't be made into a butter knife like a lot of people have watered it down. It needs to be something that's going to that's gonna cut. Hallelujah. It's all right if God steps on our toes. It's all right if our feet get to burning because you know what? That makes us do right. It makes us live right. It makes us be ready for the coming of the Lord because He's coming. You know, uh, just like uh, the song they used to say, uh, Hezekiah, come on, Hezekiah, uh, got to be prepared. Got to be ready for the coming of the Lord. We've got to get our house in order. You see, that's the thing that, God, that, that Paul is trying to tell Timothy. He's trying to say, you make sure you stay away from this, uh, away from this form, of God, uh, form of godliness and denying the power of God. That's what the people are doing. They're having a form of God. They're having so-called church. But they're watering down the message of God. God, hallelujah, wants it preached right with love and compassion. You didn't see Jesus watering down the message. He told people how it was. Oh, hallelujah, help me. Did he tell the woman at the well? Did he tell the woman at the well, hey, you're right. That five hundred, the one you're with now is not, is not, is not the husband. Did he tell her that? The woman at the well? Hello? Yes. Hello, anybody here? That's right here. Yeah. He didn't water down. He told her, he said, you know what? If you drink from this well that we're drawing water from, you're going to thirst again. He said, but if you drink the water that I'm about to give you, hallelujah, you'll never thirst again. Let me tell you, he didn't water it down. Hallelujah, this world wants to water it down. There's all kinds of waters out there. You can get springtime water. You can get propeller water. You can get uh, spring water. You can get all kinds of different waters. But let me tell you, there ain't a water that are compared to the water of God. Hallelujah. When he gives you that living water, hallelujah, there's no mistake in it. And people need to get back to get the living water of God. Hallelujah. And it comes. Right preaching. It comes through the Word of God. It comes by people preaching the truth of what God said. Preaching was 
Hallelujah. Because this right here will help you stay steadfast and sure. Hallelujah. I want the word. I want it preached to be straight and strong. Because if I got an error in my way, I want to fix it before he comes back. Because listen, I'm not staying behind with the devil's crowd. I'm not staying behind to deal with the Antichrist. I'm not staying behind to say what if or what if or what if this or what if that. I'm going on the first load, so hallelujah. When that truth comes out, hallelujah, the message is preached. If God pricks my toes, then I need to make things right. If God touches my heart, then I need to make things right. Hallelujah. Because we all got to live right and we got to do right. And God pricks the heart because he wants us to stay right for his glory and his name's sake. Hallelujah. Preaching a watered down version. Luke 13 and 3, I tell you nay, but except you repent, you shall all likewise perish. Luke 13 and 5, I tell you nay, but except you repent, you shall all likewise perish. Hallelujah. Jesus didn't water it down. He said, unless you all repent, you're going to all perish. you got to repent. You see, we live in a time where people say, well, you don't have to go to the altar anymore. Oh, you don't have to repent so much. It's all right. That, 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 that'll be okay. Don't worry about that that you just did. But I'm telling you now, if repentance wasn't important, he wouldn't have said it in the Word of God as many yes. times as he did. He wouldn't have said, you got to be born again. you got to be born again. So can I see the kingdom of God? Hey, that wouldn't have been put in the Word of God if it wasn't real, if it wasn't true. He wouldn't have said his only begotten son. It was all right to do what you want to do because Adam and Eve did what they wanted to do, didn't they? Mm -hmm. But evidently it wasn't right to do that because they were kicked out of the garden. They weren't killed, but they were kicked out of the garden. They couldn't go back in it. And then he sent his only begotten son to give his life on Calvary. So there must be something wrong with living wrong. Mm -hmm. Amen, Brother David. Hallelujah. There must be something wrong with not living holy and righteous for God. There must be something wrong with being mean and ugly and hateful. Well, God wouldn't have said, oh, we got there must be something wrong. Now, I'm not a rocket scientist, but I can tell you there must be something wrong if God sent his only son to help change the world and, and to give the world an opportunity to be saved and have a plain, holy life. There must be something wrong with just living like you want to, doing what you want to. Contrary to this watered-down versions across the world. Watered-down versions. Hallelujah. Some people believe I've said this before, and I'm going to say it's a good spot. Some people believe that if I was to pass away tonight and I wasn't a Christian, that, that y'all could gather together, y'all holy rollers out there, y'all could gather together and y'all could pray me into heaven. Oh, Lord. That's what some people believe. Some religious believe that. Amen. Well, let me tell you, you ain't got to worry about me not being prepared when I leave this world because I'm going to be ready. Amen. But I'm not counting on anybody to pray me into another level because it ain't happening. Once I draw my last breath, it's over. That's it. Once you draw your last breath, it's over. That's why it's so important that we get the gospel out there right. That's why we preach the truth right. I'm not talking about just the preacher behind pulpits. Everyone is called to preach the gospel. You're called to go out and call the world and preach the gospel to every creature. If you got rabbits out there, preach to them. If you got if you got squirrels out there, preach to them. Hallelujah. No matter what, if you got dogs, cats, fish, turtles, whatever you got, preach to them. Preach to them. Let them know that Jesus is coming soon. They better be ready. Let everyone, just tell everybody. <laughs> I remember when I first got saved. And then God called me to preach after that. You know, on down the road, God called me to preach. I want to preach anybody. It didn't matter. I preached to a wall. I mean, it didn't matter. I just wanted to preach because God called me to preach. <clears throat> I knew I was called to preach before I was, knew I was called to pastor. But God called me to preach. You, you see, it didn't matter who it was or where it was. I wanted to preach. And I've still got that same mindset in my life. Hey, it don't matter to me. Hallelujah. I told you a story about preaching for a graduation one time. Well, you know I hadn't been called back to, to preach or, or to pray at a graduation. You know why? Because I mentioned the name of Jesus. Well, let me tell you, I'm going to mention Jesus, Jesus, Jesus all the days of my life. Hallelujah. Because had it not been for Jesus, where would I be? Had it not been for Jesus, where would you be? Had it not been for Jesus, where would this world be today? Let me tell you tonight. Hallelujah. Jesus is alive. Many have put the fire out. Many have put the fire out. Basically, many have gotten cold, dead, and dry, 
sitting on pews in, in America, in the church. Leviticus 6 and 13, the fire shall ever be burning upon the altar. It shall never go out. The fire of God is strong. Once you get the fire, if you've been saved, sanctified, and filled with the Holy Ghost, that fire is strong in your life. And you can't, it takes a pretty good, a pretty good combination of something wrong to get that fire out. Hallelujah. The devil's been trying to put my fire out for years. But let me tell you, he can't get this fire out. Now, I know sometimes the fire gets a little shorter or a little smaller than at other times because discouragement comes even to the pastor. Situations come even to the pastor. But let me tell you, the devil can't put my fire out because God put it there and there ain't nobody, no man alive, no devil, no devil bill that's going to take the fire away from me. But you know what's happened? A lot of people, the fire has been snuffed out because they quit having the altars of God. I'm, not, I'm talking about the altars in the church. I'm talking about the altars at home and in their, in their room or a closet or bed or wherever it is or in the pews or in the chair. People have quit forming an altar. An altar is a place where there has to be a sacrifice and people have gotten to the place where they don't sacrifice their life to the glory of God anymore. They say, well, I'll do this for you, God, but I won't do that. Let me tell you, you either sacrifice your whole life for God or you're not going to have anything of God. Let me tell you, he said if we're ashamed of him, he'd be ashamed of us before the Father. I'm telling you tonight, hallelujah, we got to keep the fire burning in our life. Amen. <laughs> I remember when I was a young kid living with, living with my parents, we had a neighbor that had a junkyard. And the road we lived on was a dirt road. It was all dusty. I mean, the cars would come flying up down the road. The school bus come flying up down the road. It was all dusty. Dust everywhere. Dust flying everywhere. Well, the neighbors, they would get barrels, which the, the, the I don't remember what the people are, they come get them and find them now. But they get barrels and put them back in the truck. And they go up and down the road and pour out oil, motor oil from the cars on the road. Y'all might have seen it before, but they'd be poured out and it would slick the road down, make it dust. There wouldn't be no dust no more, but you'd have slick. If you go there too fast, you'd lob it run in a ditch, you know. That's how. That's, and they put it on there and they would never get it calmed down. No dust anywhere. No dust going to get on the car. No dust on the house. No dust. Everything calm. Everybody's, everybody's going just, just smooth sailing. And then after a while, the oil would rub off or wear off or, or sink in or, 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 or uh, get go away or whatever. And they'd have to do it again eventually because it wouldn't last forever. And so it would dampen the dust again and keep the dust from, from flying up on everything. You know, that's exactly what a lot of people have had in their life. They've had something come cover their fire up. Their fire used to be catching. Their fire used to be getting a hold of people. Their fire used to be in their testimony and their witness to somebody else. Their fire used to be excited. They used to get excited when you said, let us go into the house of the Lord. They used to get excited when you would sing, put on the corner of praise. They used to get excited when you begin to tell them about Jesus loves them and Jesus gave his life for them and so they could be saved. They used to get excited, had the fire of God, used to run, hoop, holler, and shout and get excited, but somehow the devil has come by with some cross oil, not the anointed oil of God, not the oil from heaven, but the oil of the devil, the oil of the world, and it's calmed the fires down across America, and the church of America calmed down, because politicians say calm down, because people in high places say calm down, don't get so excited, this one over here says oh, you all not to get so excited, you're making your hair be a mess, well you know what, it'd be alright if some of those toupees would blow off once again, and God would move and minister in their life, hallelujah. God wants us to let that fire out. Hallelujah. Let people see the fire burning. But people have allowed the, the enemy to come in and cover up the fire. Because he's told them, there's no need to go to the altar. You haven't done wrong. Or you haven't seen. You don't need nothing from God today, so don't go to the altar. Well, you know what? Just because you don't have sin in your life, don't mean you don't need to have an altar where you say, Lord, I lay myself down for you. I give my life a living testimony for you. Just because you don't have sin in your life doesn't mean you don't need an altar. The altar is not just a place for you to give forgiveness of sin. The altar is a place where you give God your all and God begins to pour out on you. Hallelujah. You know, a lot of people ain't getting what they need from God because they ain't giving to God. Help me, Jesus. I'm not talking about money. I told you before I ain't going to preach on money unless God directs me. But I'm talking about it themselves. You know, we're not getting. 
We're not going to get from God if we're not going to be faithful to God. Mm -hmm. I've never seen a time and people inspired with people that used to be on fire for God. They used to shout. That used to, mm, used to do all kinds of things in the church world. That used to sing, used to do this, used to do that. But now they just go on along. But they'll be the first to tell you, oh me, preacher. I got this going on in my life. Pray for me, preacher. Well, what happened to the fire? You see, that fire that you had, hallelujah, would help keep that oh me, oh my status from your mind. And you might go through the same problem, but if you've got the fire, God will surely bring you out of what situation you're in. You see, people's in a situation sometimes not because of the devil, not because of things around them, but because of their own self, their unfaithfulness to God. Amen. Sometimes people have so many things going on in their life that's not what they like. Because of their own doings. Matthew 3 and 11. You know this, this is me. John the Baptist was baptized. He said, I need to baptize you with water under repentance. But he that cometh after me is mightier than I. Whose shoes I'm not worthy to bear. He shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire. Amen. You can't have the Holy Ghost without the fire. Amen. You can't have the fire without the Holy Ghost. Amen. Oh, Deal. Have you ever went somewhere and bought something as a package deal? Hallelujah. You know, I like to drink Diet Pepsi's. I go to the store and I get the bottle. I like the bottle drinks better. The little ones, uh, two liters get stale to me a lot of times. And so I get the 20 ounce ones. And they got a deal now. You buy two for 333 You know, that's a little cheaper than just buying one at a time. One and then one. So I usually get some at the, at the special deal. You see, that's, that's, like, that's like with God. Hallelujah. When we pray for the Holy Ghost to touch our life, we get the Holy Ghost and fire. That's what Jesus baptizes us with. If we'll just let the Holy Ghost work in our life, He'll give us that fire. You know what fire does? It purges our life. It purges out that sin or the wrong or the negative or the bad or whatever it is. It purges out. But guess what it also does? That fire begins to take hold. And before long, we're like a burning bush. And people's looking and saying, you know what? They got a hold of God. Hallelujah. I need to try a little bit of that. And before long, you got people coming in church that never been in church in their life. You got people giving their hearts to the Lord that never served Him a day in their life. And God's working in people's lives because of your fire. Amen. We don't need to let our fire be snuffed out. Our fire go away. Hallelujah. Got too much. Hallelujah. Too much of people's fires is going out. God's trying to get us to receive it. We gotta have a fire catch. Let it grow bigger. Preacher, how does the fire grow bigger? It, it grows by praying more, Amen. by seeking God more, by being in church more, by reading the Bible more, by praying, by doing all godly things. It grows and it grows in that fire. Hallelujah, you can't contain it. Hallelujah, when I first got saved, I went to home of Oakwood, built more homes, and I couldn't contain it. I didn't go in there the first day there I got saved. I didn't go in there and work and just and just work and keep my mouth shut. Man, you know what I did? I went in there and started inviting people to church. I had something I got a hold of her. Some got a hold of me or whatever the case. Hallelujah. I knew I had had been hooked into the right right socket. Hallelujah. That God had come into my life and to change me and I felt something different. I didn't look different. I didn't talk any different as far as uh, my voice. I didn't say those ugly words I used to say. I didn't act the way I used to act. But I, I was the same David Shankle. But you know what? Jesus came on the inside and it changed me. He gave me a fire, gave me an excitement, and I still got the fire today. Hallelujah. The devil is trying to snuff it out. The devil is trying, me to, trying to get me to calm down. Well, let me tell you, I'm like a bull in a china shop. There's no common. David Shankle down when he gets to talking about the Holy Ghost and the fire of God and God moving in my life and saving and saving by the people with the Holy Ghost. There ain't no stopping. Hallelujah. Because God is real. Amen. Yes, amen. Hallelujah. The devil ain't got enough oil yes, to deafen my fire. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yeah. The devil yes, take that. That's right. Yeah, stomp on that devil's head. You see, that's what the church world needs more of. The fire keep catching. That's how a revival fire starts. It's people let the fire burn. Amen. And keep going for the glory of God. Keep burning for God. Keep burning for God. Hallelujah. That's how revival starts across the land. Somebody let the fire spread out and it catches on to somebody else. 
and it catches on to a family over here, family over there, family over there, family over there. And before long, you got a revival. Hallelujah. There ain't no containment. All you can do is jump on and say, I'm in for the ride. You can say, I'm hanging in there like a hair in a biscuit. Praise the Lord, because you're going to hang in and you're going to hang on. Hallelujah for the glory of God. Let me tell you, that's what the fire does. The fire wakes you up in the morning and says, you know what? It might be a terrible day, but I can tell you today, hallelujah, God woke me up. It might seem terrible to man, but it's going to be a great, awesome day. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Mondays are marvelous Mondays. Tuesdays are terrific Tuesdays. Wednesdays are wonderful Wednesdays. Hallelujah. Fridays are fabulous Fridays. I don't remember what Thursdays are. Hallelujah. Good Saturday and Sunday. Those are the days of the Lord's man. We're going to rejoice and be glad. That's all I know to say. But I can tell you now, hallelujah, no matter what you might face tonight, no matter what you might face in the morning or tomorrow, God is still in control. Hallelujah. God is still don't have a form. Paul told Timothy, says, stay away from those with the form. Don't have a form. Don't, 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 don't have a form to where, uh, where many uh, put the fire out. Don't let your fire go out. Don't, don't, don't be in a form or have a form like people that water down the Word. And don't have a form where, where people have allowed God's house to become a social club, a social gathering, a place where people just go along and get along. He said, you need to get away from that. And that's what I came to tell you tonight. God sent me by to tell you. This morning when Brother George was uh, preaching, teaching, he came, he, he, he's not, he, he's a preacher, he's not, he's not really a teacher. He's a preacher, he was a preacher teacher. He was preaching, teaching this morning. And he, uh, he does a wonderful job. And he, uh, he was talking and the Lord brought back that memory about the, the oil on the dirt road. And I began, the Lord began to deal with me about this message for tonight. I told you it's hot off the press. He began to deal with it. And I, and I think about so many people that I've seen in just my young Christian walk. I've seen a lot of people, been around a lot of people that love God, that did things for God. I've been around a lot of people that used to sing for God. A lot of people, some that was filled with the Holy Ghost. God would speak through them and the Holy Ghost uh, would, would speak through them and interpretations would come. I mean, just awesome, awesome for God. But the devil would throw a monkey wrench in him. And instead of clenching on tighter to God, they let go of God. And they would go out into the world and serve the world. Some of them, many of them are still serving the world today. <coughs> Turn their backs on God. Perilous times. Perilous times. Many are falling away. Many are turning their backs on God. Many are giving up on God. Many have allowed, I'm not talking about the ones that have medical conditions and things like that that are out causing COVID, but many across this world have used COVID as an excuse Amen. to stay out of church, to quit working for God, to quit doing what God wants them to do. I'm not talking about the ones that's got medical conditions because I understand that, but there's a lot of healthy people right. in this world that are not in churches today because they say of COVID. But it doesn't stop them from going other places. That's right. Let me tell you, there's no greater place I'd rather be than in the house of the Lord. Amen. Besides heaven, Amen. no greater place than the house of the Lord. Amen. You see, I can come up with an excuse every day. Mm -hmm. You can come up with an excuse every day. Why not me? Be in the house of the Lord, or why not pray, or why not to read the Bible, or why not this, why not that? We come up with all kinds of excuses, but you know what? You know what we do? We push through those excuses and we say, you know what? Those excuses ain't going to hinder me. I'm going to serve God. You know what that is that says that? That's the fire that's burning on the inside. That's on the inside that says, you know what? I can't let that excuse keep me out of God's uh, presence. I can't let that excuse keep me from doing God's work. I can't let that excuse keep me from being who God wants me to be. And so they, uh, so that, 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 that keeps you going, that fire. That's what I'm talking about. Don't let the fire be snuffed out by the enemy. Don't, 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 don't have a form of godliness. Deny the fire. But let God be God of your life. Have the real deal. Be the real deal. Be the church. 
Hallelujah. Don't water down what you're preaching. Hallelujah. Don't water down what you live and have that fire. Hallelujah. And, and be in God's house and doing godly things for God. Not for man. Not for the preacher. I appreciate when people like me or love me or whatever. But don't do, don't do anything because of me. Do it for God. That's what we're in this for. We're in it for God. Amen. Hallelujah. You know what? We're in it to win it. Amen. We're in it to win it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. What's that song, song said this morning? From a sinner to a winner. Right. Hallelujah. Amen. That's where I came from. I came from a sinner to become a winner. I was a, I'm a winner tonight. You're a winner tonight. We're all home, folk. I know this message is strong. But it's to equip you and encourage you. Because you're going to see somebody soon that you need to share something of this with. This message or not was to build you up. To help you know you can't water it down. When somebody asks you a question about the Word of God, be truthful. Don't water it down. Don't beat around the bush or candy coat it. We say this and I'm going to close. Just answer me come. Had someone one time, they knew I was a Christian, I was preaching the gospel and, and serving God just on fire. And uh, this person comes to me one time again to talk to me uh, and told me, you know, they, they didn't believe in holiness living and all and, and everything. And so I, I tried to I tried to get along with them and everything. Because you never you never argue with anybody about the gospel. The word of God does it does it itself. God does everything for you. But we were talking, he, this person told me one day, he said, you know, he said, he said, you know, there's the only thing different about us. He said, you're going to have a mansion like me. you have a mansion when we get over to heaven. He said, but I'm going to have a shack by the river. Now, this is the person that didn't believe in living holy and everything's all right. Do what you want to. Live like you want to. You're going to heaven no matter what. That's, that's the way they believe. And, uh, and, and he told me that. And it just, it just hurt me that someone believed that that no matter what they did, they were still going there to be a shack. There's not any shacks in heaven. Let me tell you, the cheapest thing in heaven is streets paved with pure gold. There's not any shacks in heaven. He went to prepare us a place that where he is going to be also. There's a mansion in heaven. Hallelujah. There's a mansion. There's not a shack. So you see, we've got to stand up for the truth. And I, and I, I shared the truth with this individual. They want to agree to disagree, and that's fine. I have no problem. They will agree to disagree. I can't get you to heaven. I can just tell you what the Word of God says. If we, agree to, if, we want to, if we want to agree to disagree, I don't know. But I'm telling you tonight, we can't water this Word down. And we can't let the fire go out of our life. We have to be what God's called us to be. We can't be a form, but we need to be a real deal. Do what God's called us to be. As we pray tonight, just a moment, have a stand. We're going to pray. I want us all to pray. He's all the road, but if you want to come to all and pray, you can. You pray right your seat. There's anyone here, anyone watching that's not saved, lost and undone, and not right with the Lord. All you got to do is say, Lord, I'm sorry. I know God's drawing you. God's freaking you. God wouldn't have given a message. Never go out and all the board. He never has, never will. God's freaking your heart. All you got to do is say, Lord, I'm sorry. Please forgive me for my sins. Come to my life and cleanse me and change me. But all of us, all those are the ones that are ready, blood bought by the precious blood of the Lamb, all you got to do is say, Lord, help me to be the real deal. Help me to come to your house. Help me to read your word. Help me to pray. Hallelujah. Because of you, not because of a social gathering or a social club, but God, help me to be what you have. Help me to be part of the church that's going to glory. Lord, and, and, and help us to pray. And, and we need to all pray. Lord, help us not to water down the message that you give us. When someone talks to us, when we talk to someone, help us not to water down or candy coat it. But let's, let us tell them the truth and the holy word of God. And we need to pray, God, help the fire to burn stronger today than it did yesterday. Help it to burn stronger tomorrow than it did today. So we can reach out to those around us. Help us to be effective witnesses. Help us to be effective testimonies for your glory, God. That's what we need to pray. And ask God to help us. Because he came to equip us tonight so we can be prepared for when we meet someone this week or next week or whenever it may be. And we can tell them about the love of God. You will stand with us. You just pray in the way you see fit. Heavenly Father, I come before you tonight, Lord. I thank you for this message.
message. Lord, it's strong and it's, it's in tune and it's intact. Lord, I thank you for this tonight, God. You've spoken to us. You've breathed life into us, Lord. Lord, you've reached out and you've touched us tonight. Everyone here, everyone watching live stream, and everyone that'll be this week, God, you've touched in a mighty way. Lord, I, we come to you tonight, Lord, thank you for this message. Thank you for everyone here and everyone watching. Lord, if there's anyone here or anyone watching live stream that's lost and done, Lord, help them to make things right with you. Lord, when they ask you for forgiveness, please forgive them. When they ask you to come in their life and cleanse their heart, please do that. Lord, reach out and touch them in a mighty way. Let your power and Holy Ghost anointed shine forth in their life, move in their life, move in their heart and soul, and do what it takes, God, in their life. Lord, let it be what you need to be. Lord, for all the ones that's blood bought by the fresh blood of the land, bring you to heaven. Lord, help us to stay strong. Help us to stand fast. Help us to be the real deal, not a form of God. It's not a form and a fashion, but the real deal, God. Lord, help us to not be part of a social club. But Lord, help us to be a godly house. Lord, help us to be a house of prayer, not a den of thieves. Help us to be a house that you can call upon. Lord, help us to be part of that house that's going to heaven, part of that church that's going to heaven. Lord, reach down and touch around us. Reach down and touch in our lives that we can be your people. Lord, and we can be those ones that you call us to be, Lord. Not just a certain, not a social club, but Lord, it's good to fellowship and to love one another. But Lord, we shouldn't worry about uh, uh, who's here or not here. But Lord, as long as we've come to serve you and to worship you, we know that you're here with us, God. Lord, we just ask you to do that. Lord, I ask you to reach down. And Lord, help us not to water down your message, water down your word, but help us to preach your word strong and true with our lifestyle, with our holy living, with the words we say when we're asked on the street about the word of God, when we're talking to people on the street. Lord, help us to share the truth with them and let them know that they got to repent. Oh, they all likewise perish. we got to let them know to be born again if they want to see God, they want to see the kingdom of God. God, help us to be those ones that are standing up for the truth and not water it down, not sugarcoat or candy coat the message, but Lord, tell the truth. Let people know. And Lord, let that fire keep burning in our lives. Lord, help it not be watered down or all down or, or stuffed out. But God, help that fire to burn stronger tomorrow than it did today. Help it burn stronger today than it did yesterday. And at the end of the week, help it be stronger than it was at the beginning of the week. God, I ask you to help our, our fire to keep burning so that we'll be able to uh, stay right with you. You'll purge out those wrongs, those thoughts, those failures, those negatives. And Lord, we'll be able to just be. Lord, help it to be able to be catching, catching the people around us. And Lord, we start a revival. Revival starts in us. Lord, we can be revived. Let the fire burn on the inside of us. Let the fire burn, hallelujah, around us. Let the Holy Ghost and fire burn within us that we can reach the lost city cause and testify and witness to people about what you've done, what you're doing, what you will do, and what you can do. God, I ask you to go with each and every one. Watch over them. Keep them safe. Help them to continue to do your will and be that light. Lord, we love you tonight. Ask you to do a mighty work in our life that we be your people. We love you, praise you, and thank you. In Jesus' holy name we pray. And the church said, Thank each and every one of you for watching. All of you that are here tonight, remember Jesus loves you. Pastor David loves you as well. Don't forget conference call Tuesday, Wednesday night service, Wednesday. Don't forget about that. Invite people and tell people. We love you. God bless you. Have a good night.